For this video on reaction mechanisms, we will work an alternative problem to identify an example with rate laws and how we determine which step is rate determining. So we have a different two-step mechanism. Notice with this information, we are not told which step is fast and which step is slow. We just know the number and the order of the steps. So again, here we're asked to write the overall equation. Same process as before. We want to cancel out anything that is the same on both sides. So just our N2, O2 will cancel. And when you cancel something out, that is a hint that it will be an intermediate or a catalyst, by the way. So notice that we have the two NOs listed here, and those can be written out separately, or I could have written them with the coefficient. So for my overall equation, I'm going to do that, combine them together. I have oxygen left over as another reactant, and then I have two NO2 on the product side. Again, we want to confirm that this equation is balanced. So we have two nitrogens on each side. We have a total of four oxygens on the left and four oxygens on the right. So that is balanced. Now we're asked to write the rate law for each step. Again, we write the rate law using the original equation. So we ignore any crossing out that we did. For the first step, we have two NO molecules. So recognize I can write it as NO squared, or I could write each separate NO molecule uh, multiplied together. For our second equation, we have N2O2 and oxygen. Each of those is first order, or has a coefficient of 1, therefore they are first order. So that is our rate law for each step. Now notice the next piece of information we're given is a little bit different. Now we're told the overall rate law is this equation. And we're asked to determine which step is the rate determining step. So in other words, we're now given this information. Remember from our previous video, we said that if the first step is slow, then the first step rate law will be the same as the overall rate law. So take a look here. Here's our rate law for the first step. Here's our overall rate law. Are those the same? Exactly the same, no differences or the equivalent of. What you should recognize is that they are not the same. Notice that in our overall rate law, we have the addition of oxygen in here, meaning that these two are not the same. So for our example, those are not equal. Since the rate law of the first step does not equal the rate law of the overall equation, we know that our first step is not the slow step. Because we're only given two steps here, it means we know that the second step has to be the rate determining step. Now, for purposes of this class, if and when the st second step is slow, we could solve for that rate law. It's just a matter of algebra and substitution. We're not going to. It's not a critical concept to master. So we won't learn how to solve for the rate law, but we this would be the second variation of a problem that we could work, that if I give you the overall rate law, you can then determine which step is the rate determining. The next two slides that I have in here are practice slides. So this one, I have removed the answers. In the notes, the answers are still there. What I'll encourage you to do is see if you can identify the answers to these questions. Again, preferably covering the answers that are in the notes. Second practice slide, now we have a three-step mechanism. So stepping it up a notch and asking you to identify, again, answers to these questions.
One more variation that can be used to identify the rate determining step or the slow step is to use a reaction profile diagram down here. Remember in these diagrams we're looking at reaction progress as we go from reactants to products and we're measuring potential energy on the y-axis. Remember that we are measuring activation energy as the difference between reactants and our transition state. And we can actually tell the relative rates of reactions based on the heights of these activation energies. So our first step has a much larger activation energy than our second. Remember, the lower the activation energy, the faster it is. And so with this larger activation energy shown in step one, this is our slow step. So that is how we identify that step one is slow. And that means that when we write our rate law from these reactants, we know the rate law for our overall equation looks like that. So again, adding everything together in our equation, we get this overall equation. Notice that the coefficient here does not match the order that we see in our rate law down below. The other thing to recognize from this mechanism is that we do have a catalyst. So iodide that is squared in red here is our catalyst in this example. And now we identify how that is changing our mechanism. So again, we know a catalyst is a substance that will be introduced to change the mechanism to speed up a reaction. And it does that by lowering the activation energy. So for comparison, if I had a reaction that looked like this following the red pen here with a fairly high transition state, this would be my original reaction. When I add a catalyst, I lower my transition state, thereby lowering my activation energies. So this higher transition state is showing with no catalyst. This lower transition state is showing with a catalyst added. And so again, catalysts lower the activation energy. Remember that the lower it is, the faster reaction tends to happen. A more accurate graph of the difference would look actually like this one, where our higher graph is the uncatalyzed reaction and the lower one, because when we add a catalyst, we change the mechanism. We often have multiple steps in here, so multiple activation energies, but they're all lower than the original reaction. And then a couple of quick definitions about catalysts. They can be defined as homogeneous or heterogeneous. So a homogeneous catalyst is when the catalyst is in the same physical state, same phases, as all of the reactant substances. So in other words, if everything is a gas, then the catalyst is homogeneous. Or a catalyst can be considered heterogeneous when it is in a different physical state. So here we're showing the reaction of ethylene reacting with hydrogen. And this reaction happens on the surface of a nickel solid. So everything in this reaction is a gas, but our catalyst is the solid. Your practical application of catalyst is the catalytic converter in your car. So a catalyst is used, typically uh, platinum, palladium, or rhodium, pretty expensive metals. A metal is used to help increase the rate at which your uh, products of combustion are converted into safer gases. Another practical application would be enzymes. So these are large protein molecules that act as catalysts to speed up the rate of biological reactions. And this concludes our discussion of mechanisms and our kinetics chapter.